Thank you, Richard, uh, for that uh, unexpected welcome. But um, uh, it's very great to be here. It's a great privilege to be here. Um, and thank you to Peter and, and, and all of the organisers for giving me the honour of, of, of speaking to you this afternoon. And I really am proud to be a fundraiser, uh, but that's not mostly what I'm going to talk about. Um, so just a quick bit of background. I've been at Cancer Research UK for 12 years now. Um, just, set, uh, just over seven of those as chief executive. And as I note from the programme, for one day only, also creative director. Um, but we'll, 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 we'll pass over that. Um, so I've got about 25 minutes, half an hour. So I'm going to talk a little bit about cancer research today. Uh, I'm going to talk about a bit about the climate we're operating in, give you a sense of why I feel so strongly about the work that we're doing at Cancer Research UK. I'm going to talk a bit about where we are in cancer and some of the developments that we've made over the last few years. And of course, um, as you might expect, I'll touch a bit on fundraising as well. Now, given that the theme of this conference is proud to be a fundraiser, I thought I'd just start by saying that my personal experience with fundraising started something over 20 years ago. Um, at the beginning of 1993, I became chief executive of a different charity called the Patwell Trust, based just outside Cambridge. And when I joined Patworth, um, the organisation was in real trouble. It was hemorrhaging money, and one of the reasons that I joined them, having done a piece of strategy work for them as a management consultant, was to try and, organize, try and turn the organisation around. Um, and so for the first 18 months or so, my job was really to, to if you like, to, to fix the organisation that was in real trouble. And it was an organisation that primarily raised most of its money through government contracts and through trading activities. And there were many things that struck me when I first joined Patworth Trust. Um, and I could talk at length about many of the things I learned about being in a charity from that first experience. But one of the things that struck me very early on was here was a charity doing amazing work, really turning people's lives around, but it had no fundraising activity. And so one of the things that I set about doing very early was to say, well, let's, let's have some fundraising. Um, and so uh, we, we put together a very small team of people and relatively quickly we managed to grow fundraising to about half a million pounds a year, which 20 years ago was quite a lot of money actually and in the context of the Patworth Trust really was a lot of money and helped us amongst other things to, to do what we needed to do, which as I say was, was to turn the organisation around. Of course now I have the responsibility of leading an organisation that raises a thousand times as much as that every year. Um, and in contrast, we have no government money. So it's a really very different organisation from the Papworth Trust. It is a huge responsibility, and it's a responsibility that, that is perhaps best exemplified by, by the amount we raise. And the statement that that makes about how the public in the UK puts their faith in us to do something about this disease that, that many of us fear, that many of us have lost loved ones to, that, that many of us have had very, very direct experiences of. And it demonstrates, I think, something about that, that privilege, that responsibility that we, that we face at Cancer Research UK, as I say, to address this disease. And I can tell you how immensely proud I am to have the opportunity of being Chief Executive of this, of this fantastic organisation. But I'm also conscious that some of you will know a lot about Cancer Research UK and some relatively little. So let me just give a little bit of background and start by, by what is Cancer Research UK. Well, um, actually Cancer Research UK owes its origins to a fundraiser, a very visionary fundraiser called Thomas Rudd. He was a businessman here in London and in 1902 he placed an ad in the St James's Gazette. Per chance to raise funds for a new cancer institute to research the causes and treatment of cancer. And that one ad raised £40,000 from just over 200 individuals. If only we can have ads that raise that sort of money today. <laughs> Bear in mind this is over 100 years ago. And so the Cancer Research Fund was born uh, and established on the 4th of July 1902 by a group of doctors and surgeons. It was the UK's first specialist cancer charity. And two years later, um, the fund was renamed uh, the Imperial Cancer Research Fund, the ICRF, that, that many of us will remember. A couple of decades later, another group of, doc uh, of surgeons and, and scientists decided that they wanted to focus more heavily 
on clinical research in contrast to the more laboratory-based research that the ICRF was predominantly doing. So they formed a new charity, which they called the British Empire Cancer Campaign, later renamed the Cancer Research Campaign. And of course, many decades later, um, in 2002, these two organisations would merge to form what we now know as Cancer Research UK. So, more than a century after its foundation, Thomas Rudd's vision has led to this organisation that we now call Cancer Research UK. It's led to countless discoveries. It's led to more than half of all the cancer drugs we use around the world to treat cancer. It's led to two Nobel laureates, and most importantly of all, it's led to millions of lives saved from cancer. So, we are very proud at Cancer Research UK to be able to talk about that work that we've done over the years, and to talk about the importance of that initial vision from Thomas Rudd to create what he has created uh, over a century later. And our C symbol embodies our role and ambition. It talks about the fact that there are lots of small parts that come together to make up a bigger picture, that come together to try and disintegrate cancer, to deliver a world where cancer is no longer feared. It's inspired by the smart, brave people that come together to try and address this disease every day. What we call a collective force to make us collectively stronger than cancer and also embodies the spirit that no one should alone fight this disease that we call cancer. But of course we have a big job to do. And this slide just gives some of the, some of the facts, some of the stats about cancer worldwide. It is the major cause of, cause of mortality around the world. Approximately now 14 million people are diagnosed with cancer every year in the world and approximately 8 million people die from it. So it is the biggest cause of death worldwide, and within that, lung cancer is the biggest cause of death from cancer. Now, these numbers are growing, and I'll touch on that a bit more in a minute, but just to say that that, that 8 million deaths is expected within the next 15 years to grow to 13 million deaths. So, that, so the burden of cancer really is growing very, very rapidly around the world. And many developing countries particularly find themselves in the grip of cancers from two quite distinct sources, two quite distinct worlds, if you like. Those that are associated with the world of poverty and deprivation, particularly cancers that are caused by infections, of which there are many. And also those that are associated with the world of plenty, because in those developing countries, as people adopt more and more westernised lifestyles, so those types of cancer that are more predominant in very developed countries are becoming more common in those emerging economies. And this very rapidly rising burden of cancer places huge strains on healthcare systems of every type in every country in the world. And it's why a few years ago the United Nations made sure that it incorporated in its, in its um, declaration on non-communicable diseases that cancer should be a major theme. <coughs> And of course there is a huge opportunity in preventing lots of cancers, but it, as yet, given the numbers I've just told you about, it's a war that we're not yet winning. So those are the worldwide figures. What about the UK? Um, well, we have a big problem here in the UK. More than 325,000, in fact, more than 330,000 people now every year are diagnosed with cancer. And so, on average, that means one person being diagnosed every two minutes. And again, those numbers are increasing. Within the next 15 years, we expect that number to go up to about 425,000. More than one in three of us will develop cancer at some point in our lifetimes. That may be a statistic many of you will have heard before. In fact, uh, within, within uh, a decade, we expect for men that number to go up to one in two, and for women, not far behind. So, once again, in the UK, those numbers are rising very rapidly. We know that more than a quarter of all deaths in the UK are currently caused by cancer. And so with all the progress we've made, and which I will touch on in a minute, that means about 160,000 people lose their lives to cancer every year in the UK. And it's the biggest cause of death from illness or disease in every age group, from very, very young babies, of course, right up to the very elderly. And of course, 
we know that cancer is not one disease. We, we use this umbrella term that we call cancer, but actually cancer is many, many different types of disease. We used to talk about it being 200 different diseases. In fact, increasingly we know that it's many, many more than that. Every, for every type of cancer, there are many, many subtypes of cancer, each one of which is different, each one of which uh, affects people differently, responds differently to treatments, and so we need to think about in a very, very different way.